Hello, my name is Hilary Weller and this video describes the Navier-Stokes equations uh, which are the equations that uh, govern atmosphere and ocean dynamics. These equations are solved numerically in weather and climate forecasting models. We'll be looking at the terms of the Navier-Stokes equations and uh, the fluid dynamics associated with each term. An understanding of these terms of the equations can help when designing numerical methods to solve these equations. This uh, animation is a uh, numerical solution of the Navier-Stokes equations for a weather forecast model from uh, downloaded from Windy T site. Um, so you can see the arrows representing the wind and the colour representing the pressure. Uh, so these the wind, pressure and temperature are predicted by um, weather uh, and atmosphere and ocean models from the Navier-Stokes equations. Here are the Navier-Stokes equations. Um, I'm not going to go through them in detail on this slide. We're going to look at the terms of in individually and the, how they, the fluid dynamics associated with each term in the following slides. This is just a de the definition and uh, the, the definition of the variables involved. So you've got a wind vector u, time t, rotation rate of planet Earth is omega, uh, den density of the air is rho, atmospheric pressure P, the acceleration due to gravity G, potential temperature theta, um, that's uh, a, uh, related to the temperature and the pressure. Uh, kappa is the heat capacity ratio, it's approximately equal to 1.4 in the atmosphere. Q is sources of heat, for example, source of heat from the sun and due to latent heat release when uh, water evaporates and there are two diffusion coefficients here. So we're going to learn how to solve simplified versions of these equations numerically. Um, you don't need to memorize these equations but you should be able to describe the meaning and behavior of the terms. So we're going to start with the potential temperature equation which is the same as um, which is an advection equation, uh, same as many other advection equations. So this Lagrangian derivative, capital D theta by dt, um, which is equal to rate of, the rate of change of theta at a fixed point, and then advection of theta, which is the wind velocity u in the same direction of gradients of theta. There's heat sources and the diffusion of, the, of theta. So theta will be created or destroyed by the heat source Q, and in this animation there's a heat source Q here, um, which is being moved around by this wind field, um, and then diffused as well. So in order to understand how, why this advection term moves, um, moves things around, we'll consider pure linear advection so advection of a tracer or a concentration phi um, and without any source diffusion or source source sinks, this is simply d phi by dt, rate of change of phi at a point, plus u dot grad phi. So that's um, the velocity in the same direction as gradients of phi. And this is the advection of phi. So changes of phi are produced by the component of the wind in the same direction as gradients of phi. So in order to understand how this u dot grad phi term leads to changes in phi, we're going to consider a region of polluted atmosphere, and this is, this is showing the concentration of phi, um, contours of the concentration, and I'd like you to draw, if you've downloaded a copy of the notes, draw on your copy of the notes, vectors representing the gradient of phi. Let me see if I can do the same thing. some vectors of phi, so hopefully you've started doing this already. I have a vector of phi going that way, and I'll draw some arrows to show you which way it's going. Phi going that way, and phi going this way. And so u dot grad phi 
is positive where u and grad phi are in the same direction. So I'm going to mark on where it's positive. So u dot grad phi is going to be positive here. And the grad phi over here, grad phi is that direction, which is in the opposite direction to u. So grad phi is going to be negative there. And along a line of a li like this, where grad phi is perpendicular to u, u dot grad phi will be zero. So u dot grad phi will be zero here and here and up here. So now we have here that d phi by dt, that phi will change proportional to the minus of u dot grad phi. So here where u dot grad phi is positive, phi is going to decrease. And here where u dot grad phi is negative, phi is going to increase. And phi is going to stay, remain constant in a line across here. So if phi is increasing here, so decreasing here and increasing here, we'll see that this concentration and this wind here will move in this direction, uh, which is what we expect if it's being moved by the wind, which is described by this equation. Uh, so we'll now put some sources and sinks and some diffusion into that equation. So this is the same equation. Now I've got, I'm moving around a variable called psi. Here's the Lagrangian derivative again, which is rate of change at a fixed point plus the advection. And I've also got sources and sinks and diffusion. This is an animation from YouTube, which shows the uh, concentration of uh, pollution from cities over the past hundred years. Um, so you can see that there are sources in sinks. Um, there are sources of pollutant where you have cities. Uh, and then there are sinks because the pollutants are washed out by the atmosphere. Um, and then the pollutants are moved around by the wind and also diffused. So we're coming up to the 1950s now. There's slightly, there are more and more sources of pollution all getting mixed around. But they, they, it doesn't last forever. They do get... Um, washed out. Uh, coming into the 60s, so now we can see there's concentration really everywhere in the northern hemisphere. It's not um, only close to the sources. So this, this simulation was created by um, assuming you know what the winds are, so in order to solve this equation you need to know what the wind is and you know what the sources are, um, and then you, from, from known winds, you move around the sources. Coming into the 21st century now and this northern hemisphere is becoming uh, much, much, much higher concentrations of pollutants, really um, sources all over the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere is still quite clean. So thank you very much to the authors of that, creators of that video. Um, now we're going to look at the momentum equation. And the momentum equation, again, has got the Lagrangian derivative. So that's rate of change of u, the velocity at a point, plus u dot grad u. So that's the movement of velocity by velocity. And then there's the Coriolis term, the pressure gradient term. Uh, so pressure gradients cause acceleration, gravitational acceleration, and diffusion. We'll start by looking at Coriolis. Um, so if Coriolis is the only term that's large in the momentum equation, then we have the rate of change of velocity is equal to the Coriolis term. Uh, so this will, um, whatever direction the velocity is going in, it's going to get rotated by the Coriolis term. And this shows locations of uh, drifter buoys set in motion by winds in the Baltic Sea um, and then once the wind subsides these buoys follow inertial oscillations so the only significant force acting on them is the Coriolis force and the force the Coriolis force always acts at 90 degrees to the motion so it'll always make it turn in circles um, and create these inertial oscillations. Um, next we're going to look at the influence of the pressure gradient force um, if the pressure gradient force 
is the only large term in the momentum equation, um, then we can simplify the momentum equation and the continuity equation, and we'll get equations for acoustic waves, which are these equations. So what's happening here is you get a pressure gradient, and that pressure gradient is going to accelerate the velocity, accelerate the, the, fl the fluid. Um, when the fluid is accelerated, it's no longer divergent free. So then in the, this version of the continuity equation, you get a change in pressure because you've got this divergence. This divergence is multiplied by the speed of sound squared. So when you get some divergence, it leads very rapidly to large changes in pressure. And then these large changes in pressure again accelerate the fluid. Um, so you get these very fast acoustic waves um, which move at the speed of sound. I've got a, um, a nice video again which I found on, on YouTube of some acoustic waves which they can be difficult to actually see but this is an explosion and after the explosion you very quickly see that acoustic wave moving upwards and you can also see the acoustic wave coming towards the camera then knocking the camera over you can see it moving along the ground see that it goes upwards almost straight away that's because it's upwards is um, it's a shorter distance upwards um, it, now we're going to look at what happens if we have balances of terms so we've looked before at what happens if we just have the Coriolis term and if we just have pressure gradients in the atmosphere we're, the pressure gradients and Coriolis are large terms and because these are both the large terms they, they largely balance each other out and this is called geostrophic balance this is a typical weather chart um, showing uh, isobars so contours of pressure and we know that the wind because the pressure gradient and the Coriolis are balanced the wind will follow the contours so we'll have westerly winds here over uh, the United Kingdom. If, as well as um, Coriolis and pressure gradients, if we have nonlinear advection, um, so the whole of the Lagrangian derivative of U, then we get geostrophic turbulence, and here's the nice animation of zonal, jet, zonal jets that form due to um, uh, geostrophic turbulence. And the gravitational acceleration. Um, this is a sim simulation of a, a dam break. So the blue is water, and it's suddenly released. It's as if a dam breaks. And so it accelerates downwards and flows over, over this dam. And so and then as it goes upwards, it decelerates, and then it accelerates flowing down again. So we'll watch that again and see it accelerating downwards and then decelerating when it goes upwards. see some acceleration there going down. Oh no, it stopped. Here it comes again. It's going to accelerate on the way down. And decelerate on the way up. And then accelerate again coming down here. This um, gravitational acceleration term is also big in uh, formation of clouds. This is explosive cumulonimbus formation. So as the um, as heat as latent heat release, which warms up the atmosphere, so you get some strong buoyancy, and which makes the air rise very quickly in this cumulonimbus. So it's, again, you can see the effect of the gravitational acceleration term in the momentum equation. Now we're going to look at the diff influence of the diffusion equation. Uh, na um, two of the Navier-Stokes equations had diffusion terms in them, uh, which is this term of the Laplacian. So uh, the rate of change of a variable equals diffusion coefficient multiplied by the Laplacian of that variable. And in 1D, uh, rather than Laplacian, you've got just got the second derivative of that variable. Uh, where the second derivative the second derivative is high at troughs in the variable and low at peaks. 
therefore um, the diffusion will remove peaks and raise troughs so to make a profile more smooth. So if you start with this noisy profile, it'll remove the peaks and the troughs and it'll act fastest on the, the sharpest peaks and the sharpest troughs. So having a think about diffusion, you can go back and look at the diffusion equations, uh, pause, pause the video if you need to, and think, look at which terms have a diffusion, diffusion coefficient, have a think about what causes diffusion, and uh, you might want to look up if diffusion is a large term in the equations of atmospheric motion. So if you put all of that together, and you solve the complete Navier-Stokes equations, um, along with equations for water vapour and um, water, water changes in water vapour phases and radiation, um, you'll get a simulation of the global atmosphere. And this is a simulation from courtesy of Pierre Luigi uh, from the new GAM um, Met Office model, uh, run at quite high resolution. So that concludes this video about the terms of the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, in following videos, we're going to look at uh, how to solve uh, simplified equations with various terms from the Navier-Stokes equations. <laughs>